Hi guys, welcome to Mitchell King live on Facebook. So today we're going to take a look at a product called Jordan. So that is our luxury car wax. It's the best car wax that we offer. And what I'm going to show you is how to get the best from the wax. So I've got a few products lined up. So the first one would be Pure, which is our pre-wax cleaner. So what we'll do is we'll start off with Pure. We just want to deep clean the paint, get rid of all, all the old waxes and sealants. As you can imagine, this being my own car, it's got umpteen different waxes and sealants on at any one time. So this side I want to completely um, decontaminate, so to speak, with Pure. So that's our first step. And I've also got the the wall dual action as well. So we're going to be using that um, both for pure and the wax and in fact we'll also use it for the sealant as well. Um, I quite like to use the machine without the handle, it's up to yourself. I find with the handle in, especially um, with it being plastic, it would be nicer if this was rubber, they maybe have something in the works because the other contact points are rubber, rubber is a better absorber of vibration or it's a softer material. Whereas the plastic, you can really feel it coming through. So I take that off. Um, those of you asking about the cart here, so this is the detailing cart that I got recently. Um, it's just a simple plastic cart. You've got a couple of bins with it. One of the things that I did do, because it was raining funnily enough when I, when I was testing some products, is I started to drill some holes. So probably if you're using this outside, and it's going to get wet and stuff like that. I would drill some holes just to let the water go through. There's various cup holders. Um, obviously, this bin here, as you can see, I've put some holes in the corner just to let the water in. As you can see, it's dry as a bone now. Um, I quite like it, the fact that it is all plastic. I can just pressure it down. Obviously, be careful with your alkaline products because that will dry the plastic out. But you can just pressure wash it down if it gets dirty or whatever, I let it dry off in the sunlight and it's good to go again. So the product that I'll start off with first of all is Quick Detailer. Um, this is our own Mitch and King Quick Detailer and all I'll do is I'll just spray this on the paint. It's quite warm in the sun guys so I'm not going to uh, try and do too many panels at one time. Just with it being black as well it gets warm quite quickly. I'll show you this. So it's got a nifty side couple of holders for your bottles as well. I'm just removing it. We've had quite a lot of pollen yesterday um, and into this morning as well so I'm just going to remove some of that pollen. You can use this as a standalone product, so it does impart a high gloss shine straight away. As you can see, it's very easy to use. So if you are short on time, I mean that's essentially what a quick detailer is. These are decide, designed just to quickly detail the car, just to bring it up. Yeah, it's a fair amount of uh, pollen. And this cloth here that I'm using is Highlander, so it's one of our more plush cloths. And that's what I tend to use for quick detail, and I'll always use the more plush cloths, just them. Um, they offer more protection to the paint, and they, they also offer, well I'll show you here, just as I'm putting that down you can see it. So that gives you an idea, you've got much more cushion in between your hand as well. I always tend to fold them over by four, uh, just again to maximise the cushioning. And then since it's a sunny day, I'll just fold it out and let it air dry naturally. Just going to check, make sure the microphone's working. Um, if anyone that's watching, could you just tell me if the microphone's working okay? That would be much appreciated. We have had issues in the past with the microphone not working during the live video or the volume of the microphone being really high. So anyone that's watching, James Cooper, 
Uh, anyone? Yes? Okay, great stuff. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Right, okay, so we'll just go straight in. Um, I've got a variety of what we call finishing pads here, so various levels of softness, so to speak. So this one here is a blue finishing pad. You've got the red and the grey, which are pretty similar. I just want something that's slightly, just has a wee bit more bounce back because I'm going to use Pure. And Pure does have some micro abrasives and I just want to make sure that the paintwork is totally clean before we start. So, just make sure your pad's centred. Um, I've got another 18 volt battery on the charge as well guys because I'm not I've been told they last about 45 minutes so we should be done by then <laughs> um, and the table's just great because you can put stuff down you're not always having to carry it or bending down to get things especially when we're doing the videos so get your machine in one hand quick detail in the other and just a light mist you just want to prime the pad and then again twist off pure so pure is your paint cleaner and we'll just start don't have to be too careful with it it's just a paint cleaner after all just enough on the pad and we'll see how far this gets us You'll always find you put more product on the pad to start with because you're still priming the pad, so to speak. And then as you go, you'll be adding less product. So just what I'm doing here is just applying the product onto the paint so that we're not um, we're not picking up dry product. We want to be picking up wet product so that anything. Um, Really, the, the core reason behind this is if you're picking up dry product, the particles could scratch the paint. So you want to always be working wet, so to speak. So make sure your pad's nice and flat to the surface. Now you could stop there if you want, this car hasn't been machined in a while so I'm just going to work this polish in for a few minutes just to try and break down as much grime and just slightly take the edges off some of the wash marring. Um, there are some deeper scratches which would require a machine polish but with Pure you can just take the edge off it ever so slightly. What you'll find as well guys is in between the few minutes of, of talking there, if you apply it first, um, it starts to work straight away. So it's already, I can already see it softened some of the, the fallout um, that we weren't able to remove via other means. So it's already starting to really super clean the paint already. It's a very fast curer, especially when the sun's out. So. So what we'll do now is just move on to the rear quarter. Um, ideally, you don't want to be working dry product. So 
if we were doing this in the future, I'd probably just stick to a panel at a time. The weather's changed quite dramatically. We had it was quite cold. It was three degrees this morning, and I would say we're maybe up to sixteen, seventeen degrees in the sun now. So it's always a difficult one to guess. But after doing this, I would say the next one we'll just stick to one panel rather than working the two. So I've got the, what I would say guys, I've got the camera facing the other way, so I'm using the main camera just now. So if there are any questions or anything like that, I'll just get to them at the end. What I'll do is I'll flip the camera around and then go through. So that gives you an idea of how much dirt we are pulling from this car. So let's have a look. You can see the amount of dirt that Pure is actually. This is why... It's a must-have product for any detailer, enthusiast, professional, weekend warrior, whatever you might be. This is a must-have product. It's exceptionally good at what it does. It's a very simple product, but simple ideas are always the best, so they say. Um, so what we'll do now, that's enough time. So you want it to cure on the paint. So you want to leave it a couple of minutes and just do the swipe test. Make sure it's completely cured. You'll know it's cured because when you do the swipe test, you'll not see any joining uh, traces of product. So it'll be completely clear paint, so to speak. So just start at the top, work your way down. And it is as easy as that. Especially this is where the dual action comes into its own. It puts on a finer layer, a more even layer, and it in my opinion, it will lift, um, it will lift additional levels of dirt that you might not get. Well, you probably would get it with your hand, but it would just take slightly more effort. But that's what the dual action is there for. Um, and you obviously you don't need to go down the DeWalt route. If you're just starting out, there are plenty of machines on the market. Um, I went down the cordless route just simply because our closest plug is about, where you can see the about 15 metres away from where they, where I parked the cars. Um, and the other thing is, everyone kept on telling me to get cordless, so I thought, let's give it a go. And to be honest, I've, I've actually been pleasantly surprised by it. I thought these machines being cordless and being 18 volts, I just didn't think the power would be there. I didn't think they would be as powerful as they are. Um, I've corrected some of my own paint today and I'm, I'm quite surprised at the effectiveness of the machine. Obviously, Jag paint isn't the, the hardest paint in the world, but it's given a really nice finish. And bearing in mind, it's so easy just to pop the battery in. You don't need to worry about cables. But this is where the industry's going. We're going cordless, you know, cordless vacuums, cordless pressure washers, cordless machines. You are, you know, you can never compare this to maybe a corded rotary. But they're two different tools. It's it's like comparing a, a sledgehammer to a, a normal 16-ounce hammer. So it's, it's different. Um, but this, for me, does the job. It's very safe as well. I was really testing this machine today. Um, and I was quite surprised at the feedback. So it's, it's certainly strong enough. It's got more, more of a, a grunt to the motor. So we'll just continue on, guys. We've got two more panels to do. As I said... We'll just do one panel at a time. So finger over the pure, give it a shake. Because the pad, the pad sorry, now has product loaded, ideally you want to go for a second pad, but I used most of my pads this morning whilst doing some correction work. So we'll just stick with this. But ideally, once you see that level of dirt, you want another pad. If this is your first time using pure, I would maybe get a pack of four to six um, machine polishing pads just simply because you don't really want to be polishing that dirt back into the paint but for purposes of what we're doing today just as a demonstration if you're aware that I'm aware then we're all good so to speak 
So again, just the same process. Just want to dab this on. And then pick up. You don't have to be too careful round about um, trim and such like. Because again, it's just a paint cleaner. The one thing I would say, guys, sorry, not trim. Um, the So in this car, it's painted plastic. But the thing you would be slightly more cautious about is your plastic trim. So just try to keep the product away from that. If it does stain, just get some uh, treat or trim. And just you'll need a few coats just to get it off because you want to remove the polish. So, um, But as I said, if you're aware of it's a product, to avoid plastic trim, then that's all you need to do. So I'll just leave this to cure and as promised you can see that it's just getting dirtier. So that's the original colour and this is what we're... And that's the secret to really glossy paint because if you didn't use pure chances are that would still be ingrained into the paint. There we go, so that's the finished article of after only doing one side of the car. But as you can see, it's very easy. Um, again, we'll just break out our polish and wax. So this is the Olympian cloth, so just get this. It's double-sided, slightly thicker on one side, shorter nap on the other. Shorter nap is for your waxes, thicker side is for your polish, just simply because any dusting that you may get, it will be very minimal, but you want that dusting to be trapped up in the fibre. Whereas the shorter nut is better for cutting through the wax, so that's the, the reasoning behind it. But again, you might find your own way, you know, this is what detailing is all about, is um, doing things your, your own way. As long as they work for you, that's uh, that's the main thing. It's what it's all about guys, just getting out in the sun, fresh air, enjoying yourself, being with your car, cars, your friends, whatever it might be. So one thing I do really like about this, and many things that I like, but one thing that I quite appreciate is the bucket. Now, had I had the insight to this moment, I would have probably left one of these buckets without the hole so that I would have had a mixture of APC in here so that I can just chuck the foam pad in and it will be soaking and um, breaking down because it's a degreaser you want so degreasing all those sort of oils and stuff like that before you start the wash process with your foam pad. Obviously be careful with the, the backing of these pads just because they are glued on so don't leave them in very hot water and don't leave them for too long. So Pure is a slightly different product um, to Titan. So Pure is an out-and-out -out paint cleaner. It does have some micro abrasives in there, which is why you get such a glossy finish, because it's deep cleaning the paint. Whereas Titan is an out-and-out -out sealant. So a sealant is just a product that protects the paint, typically a synthetic product as well, um, versus a wax. So the difference between a wax and a sealant a wax will typically come in a paste form, so in a jar. It will typically be 
um, hard as well, so it'll be like this. You do get waxes that are are creamy, um, but they are really sealants in a jar. So this one here really lends itself to hand application, the same as pure, you can use it by hand. We've had completed so many videos with products by hand, I thought let's do a run with the dual action. Because certainly they're just becoming more and more popular now. So Titan, and what I'll do with Titan is I think I'll use the grey pad because that's the uh, softest. Um, lucky I had that table. That's the softest out of all of them. We'll just there is a safety lock on here, guys. I've just not put it on. And then all you're going to do, same thing again. Spray of QD. Make sure the pad's not too wet. You just want it misted. Give Titan a shake, and then one, two, three, four. There you go. And then all we'll do is just apply to the whole car. Um, we don't need to work it in sections. We're not working this product in. We're literally just using the dual action to spread. So I'll also just take the speed down to like 2000. We'll see how that goes. And if we need it to be faster, then we can, I'll let you guys know what I turn it up to. Again, always said uh, just before I start, always keep your pad contact, um, in contact with the paint before you turn the machine on. We've all done it. I did it recently where you turn it on, it's maybe not touching the paint and the polish goes everywhere. So just always keep it um, tight to the paint where you turn it on. Two thousand is too low. Um, it's bogging the machine down too much. So three and a half, I've turned it up. We don't want to be working the machine too much. We want to let the machine just really carry the product. And we'll just top up a little. And then again, just there we go. So, I was just thinking there, I wonder how much product I actually used uh, to do the four panels here. The other thing guys, once you finish, just have a quick look over the card, just in case there's anything that you can pick up. There you go. There's enough product on that pad still to actually do even the bonnet, I would think. Um, I just I love Titan, it is such a good product. It's so shiny, it's so glossy. It's we've the funny thing is, especially at this moment in time coming into the summer now, so many customers asking, I need that show car finish, I want the show car shine. And I always point them, start with pure, go on to Titan, and you'll be absolutely blown away. And I just came in and this is what's you know, this makes it all worthwhile. So I came in this morning, one of the email, emails that I had, and that's exactly what they said. They've used Pure and Titan, and they were absolutely blown away. It's a new customer. They haven't used any of the other products yet, but that was what they had used, and I thought, that's great. The other thing they did use, and they've just put a review on the website as well, was a quick detailer. And they've said it's the best quick detailer that they've ever used. So it just it makes all of um, the trials and tribulations of trying new waxes and prototypes and things, that's what it's for, you know, that's 
we are trying to make a company where the products that you're buying from us, they're just something new, they're exciting, they're better than what you have been using in the past. And that's really how Michelin King came about. I wanted something that didn't exist. Um, I guess similar to Porsche, where he made his own car, and I thought, right, I'm going to make my own wax, because it shouldn't be the case that one wax fits all. It's all different colours. You need to look at it from a, another angle, and that's that's what I did. Um, and now we've got these complementary products, like the Quick Detailer, the Titan, the Pure, the Air Fresheners. There's a variety of products that we sell now that are proven really, really popular. Um, so... This is now full sun, guys, if you can't tell with a, a Scotsman <laughs> uh, being absolutely roasting. So we're now in full sun, nice and warm, and it just comes off easily. Now this car has been parked in the sun all day. So if I'm being honest with you, it's probably a little bit too warm. Um, but the product's still coming off nice and easily. The quick detailers, just to catch anything, um, being direct sun and trying to catch this on the camera, it's quite difficult just to make sure that we've removed everything. Because I might be saying everything's off and you can see in the camera that there's still a, a patch, so... Just making double sure. Yeah, perfect. That looks very good indeed. So, welcome to everyone that's that's joined us. Um, we're just nearly on to the main event, which will be the wax. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the wax both by dual action and also by normal applicator. Um, and I'll show you another method, in fact, as well. So stay tuned. We'll just get this off. It's so nice to use. The gloss is just fantastic. It really makes a massive difference, this product, to your paint. So that's Titan. So if you've just joined us, joined us it's a product called Titan that you're looking for. And that's why much thing can. So again, take the pad off into the bin. Now, Jordan is our top of the line car wax. This is our Rolls Royce of car waxes that we offer. So there are a few ways of applying this. Um, and what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to bring the camera around. So that you can see exactly what I'm doing. James, I think we've, uh, yeah, I've seen your question before. I am a mechanical engineer to trade, um, but I just started to have quite an interest in products, always been interested in detailing, um, and I just started to make my own waxes it started off with the waxes we don't make all of the liquids in-house and um, the waxes yes all of the waxes are made in-house to our recipes mainly made by myself David or Ruth and um, just depending on the, the blend we've all got our own uh, autograph or signature blends that we, we make the liquids vary most of the detergents things like your shampoos wheel cleaners We'll make in-house, but some of the more specialised products we will have made out of house by um, large chemical companies. And they're not necessarily, fun enough, detailing chemical companies that we use. They might produce other stuff, but um, yeah, we, we just, the thing I would say, because we don't really need to sell the liquids, we're more of a car wax manufacturer, the liquids that we do sell are to a really high standard because I feel why bring something in from outside if it's not going to be good enough? Um, but they are absolutely fantastic, as you can see with the Titan, really easy to, to use. So with the, the Jordan, hopefully that's answered the question slightly. 
And all we're going to do here is we'll just put some Jordan onto my fingernail and then onto my hand. This might be a bit tricky today because it's rather warm. I should have brought some cold water out. It's coming. There we go. And then take this off as well. And all we're going to do is rub it between our hands and just apply your hand. I don't do this often guys because my hands are quite rough. Um, just doing what I, I do. I'm in the factory quite a lot and uh, ha quite hands on so my hands aren't particularly soft. Um, and then you can obviously put your fancy patterns in if you want. But really all you're wanting to do with a wax is apply it. This is quite hot, this paint now. Um, <laughs> so really all you want to do is spread the wax. Now, the motion of doing this is absolutely fine. In my mind, you're touching the car a lot just to spread wax. You know, the reality is you're touching the car far too much. So, although it doesn't look as nice for YouTube and Twitter and all these things, a better, more cautious way of applying the wax is just by doing this. The other thing it'll do is, you'll see in your hand you've got a slight curve in there, and all of the excess wax will get caught in there. So you're not, you know, let's count so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. <laughs> so about 29, 30 times, times that by two. So you're you're going up and down the paint 60 times. And then if you're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so Let's just call it 600, so you're going over that paint 600 times, whereas you could just do one, two, go 50-50, go so one pass, and then your next pass would start the palm, the butt of your hand essentially would be here. Do the same again, so we're on three, four, five, six, this is hot, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, so about nine passes. The other thing you won't get is the over application, which you definitely will get with this because the wax isn't getting a chance to go anywhere. The only place it's going is into your hands, which is absolutely fine for me because my hands are quite dry. But for the majority of us, um, your hands won't be as dry, so the wax doesn't actually have anywhere to go. And nine or ten times, what we're practicing here is safe application. So nine or ten times versus 600 times or 600 abrasive movements um, there's quite a difference there but again it just depends what you what you want to do for us it's we we can only you know I can just teach you what what I think works or what I've found works in the past and what's possibly the safest method but obviously you can definitely choose your own, which many of us do, choose your own route. So, let's get the camera back. And what we'll do is, hi Brian, how you doing? Um, we'll just let Jordan set up there on that panel. It takes about half an hour to 40 minutes, especially in the sun, to set up completely. And as you can see, it's a nice, really, really nice wax. The other thing you'll get with hand application is um, a thicker coat of wax as well, which is probably not what you want. So that's why I don't really do a lot of hand application because it's it, it uses a lot of product as well. And you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. So I'm just going to show you this. I'll just make sure that the camera's catching all of this, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take some of that product that we just hand applied and put it onto the pad. 
because this is how much product should be on the paint. You don't want to see, you shouldn't be seeing the trace of your finger on the paint um, when you're applying it. So. Uh, I don't want to be too overzealous because it is a machine after all, but what I've applied here, I would say if I had enough time, I could probably get this onto here as well, so I could probably do two panels, so that gives you an idea of just how much product you use when you hand apply. Slightly different method when you're putting it onto the foam pad, so don't take it like this and push it in. Try and just flick it over the top. The pad will spread it out anyway, so this the pad will kind of do the work for you. Um, and again, same thing. You'll see that there's plenty of product there. Nice. Right, I think what we'll try and do here is give you Dan, how you doing? Um I don't know if you'll see this guys, but this just gives you an idea of how much wax should be applied just there. See it there? Just see almost like a hologram is really what you're looking for. I'm going to tell you doing. Whereas as you can see when it's hopefully the camera's catching this, but there's a lot more. I mean, look at the build up of product there. There's a lot more product build up on the hand application. You can probably see that in the sun. If we just look at the amount of, yeah, see, look at that. A huge amount of product applied there. And that was this is why I, I do tend to put um, either via machine, which you can hardly see, or we'll go on to pad application. What we'll do, guys, I'll bring the camera in. Hello, Roberto, how you doing? Um, and we'll go for this one. So I'll just show you how I apply it, hopefully you can see this, one, two, three, just on the top, it's perfectly normal for the wax to sweat a little in the sun, Just it's just the, the oils, and you're just going to dab it onto the paint, and apply it. This is a really nice wax to apply when it is warm because it is so soft. It really does lend itself. The other thing, guys, I would say is obviously we're just I'm picking up new um, applicators the whole time. Whereas by the third door, you would be using less product because the the applicator is already loaded, so to speak. And what I'm actually going to do whilst I'm here, because. I know, better get a hat on, I know, that's what happens when you turn your love of wax into a career, you lose all your hair. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do here guys, because I know this is far too much product on here, um, obviously if you're doing a section like a bonnet, you could probably skim and spread it as you go. Um, that's the beauty of it being warm today, is I can pick up the excess and just soak it up in the pad and also spread it as well so that we've got a more even layer. So, you might be wondering what we're going to do for the next half an hour. Um, and I'm going to show you a wee trick. So, better if the quick detailer's cold. This is just out the fact. It has been the sun, but it's cold enough. Um, 
during his full curing time, which I would I would say, please give it that, please give it the sort of half an hour to 45 minutes, because it will look so much better. But what I'm going to do, because it's a live video and the phone battery is dying, um, is I'm going to show you how to get the wax off really quickly without too much drama. And all we'll do is we'll take our brand new Olympians, just always make sure you give them a good shake. Um, and our good friend Quick Detailer. There's two light mists. Rob, I'll show you the uh, trolley that we put up on TCB. I think you'll be our, our, some of you might be interested in that. And there we go. So all I did there is I just forced the wax into curing quickly. Now, you will take off more wax than if it had fully cured, but it gives you an idea of what you'll be left with. And we'll just do that for the rest of the... I'll move this into short and then you can see. Because we've had some questions about... Charlie, good question. Yeah, to an extent, what I'll do, Charlie, if you've got a couple of minutes, let me take this off. I've got some tar spots round about the arch and we can try it live and you can see what you think. I would always use a specific tar and glue remover um, simply because tar and glue removers have high content of solvent and that's why they're so good at removing tar. In the old days we used to use petrol um, but petrol's too expensive these days <laughs> so just buff that off. So just the same lines so much easier to remove a wax when it's been applied properly that's the dual action really comes up trump simply because it puts a nice even layer and the the jetting the gloss levels of jordan unreal absolutely unreal so and i'll give you we'll take the camera off the tripod in a minute and um, i'll just quickly get the rest off and again just stick to the shorter nap for the wax. I just find it's more effective um, and obviously just flip the sides over as well. Just so that you're not clogging up the cloth too much. Wow, this is very, very impressive. There we go. Lovely. Right, so Final finish. Let's have a tour. We always like to get the camera off. Uh, smart repairs I wouldn't be too worried about. It just depends on the, the quality of the smart repair. I would, if your car has had a smart repair, I probably would just earn the side of caution in regards to the dual action. Um, it's just one of these things. But just mask over it if it's a small area and, and try and avoid it. Right, so today we have used Pure, Titan and Jordan. And there's the... There are stairs behind the guy, so I'm, I'm too old to fall down stairs. I won't, I won't make it back. So hopefully you can see really nice gloss levels. Nice and wet. Hi Andy, how you doing? Welcome. Tar remover covers and damage to paintwork. It's funnily enough, no, I, I've not. I know that, um, I don't know if this is a car that has a smart repair. There is a car that we have. No. Um... I don't think it is, I think it's the other one. Oh no, it is, it is, it is, it's at the bumper. So, I don't know if you can see this, but this area right here, unless it's just extremely dodgy paintwork, um, but this area right here is nowhere near as good paint quality. It's got runs, it actually looks as if somebody's 
used a brush, um, which I wouldn't be surprised at. Huge amount of orange peel, total lack of clarity in the paintwork versus the other side. And this is something if you are buying a, a used car or anything like that, guys, don't be, you know, be cautious about these things. Because if it has had that amount of paint, um, I presume this this car maybe just had something like this happen, a scuff. Um, this is our family wagon, so it goes everywhere. Supermarkets and whatever, and every time I come out it's got a new ding or dent. But that's just, uh, that's just the way things are. <laughs> just gives me something else to polish, I guess. But yeah, it looks absolutely great. The issue with the cameras, and obviously doing this on the live, is even 4K isn't good enough. Um, 4K isn't even close to what our eyes, the resolution of our eyes would be. Yeah, the trolley's good, Charlie. So the trolley was a staggering 40 or 50 pounds on eBay. Um, I wish I had sold these myself because they're absolutely great. And um, I'll give you a quick, quick look at it. So you've got, I put some holes in here because the water was gathering. I don't know what it was originally made for, but it's now a detailing trolley. <laughs> yeah, so you can get the fold down one, but I I don't know if you... I, I know a lot of the guys, if Stephen McMarney has the fold down one, um, the fold down one would probably be better for doing things like your carpet mats and stuff like this, but this one was really just for a, a detailing trolley, just to keep the stuff, as you can see when we're doing the videos and whatnot, it's quite easy just to have somewhere that we can put something and it looks, you know, half decent. Um, but it's a, it's a good size, you know, that's what I would say. Often when you buy stuff, especially at this price, you're never too sure if you're getting, you know, a doll size. Um, but yeah, it's decent. It fits the dual action on there. You've got a few bins. You've got, uh, you can sort of arrange this how you want as well. Um, the one thing I would say is there aren't enough holes across the way to fit these, so you can only get like two or three in. Um, but I mean, it's it's only forty pounds, so there are probably better options out there. And again, I just drilled holes in most of these areas and along the bottom, just so that the water drains out when we're using it. Um, and before it goes back into the factory, I normally give it a a rinse down if it's been snow foaming or what anyway so it gets a, a double clean but yeah so the the product um products that we've been using today jordan this this actual jar here will go onto the website for sale it'll be obviously a heavily discounted price but that jordan there the 200 mil will be on the website in about 10 or 15 minutes so you've got let's just put them in order so that it's nice and clear so you've got Pure, which is your pre-wax cleaner or just your paint cleaner. Then you've got Titan, which is your show car gloss or high gloss sealant. And then you've got Jordan, which is our best wax that we, we offer at the moment until I find some, some other ingredients. Uh, Pad-wise, for those of you that haven't seen the pad, <laughs> that is the pad. Original colour. This is a brand new pad. You can check back in the video. Uh, so this is the original colour. And then this is the pad after just doing that panel, that panel, that one, and that one. So just after four panels. With Pure, you can use a, a normal polishing pad. This one here is a soft to medium, as you can see there. But the one that we use for Titan is a much softer pad. So typically the greys are the... Um, depends on the, the pad manufacturer, but this one just happens to be grey because... There's one that's red, so they're all different. But just one that's quite soft. Um, if you speak to any sort of decent pad manufacturer or whatever company you bought the, the pads from, they'll always be able to help you if you just tell them you want a pad for applying sealants and waxes. Um, and as you can see, it's a very, very effective way to apply your waxes. It's very fast. It's just as good. It's not as... Um, it's not as relaxing. That's one of the things that I would say, guys. So uh, let's turn the camera around. I 
don't know if I can go back through. Yes, I can. So I'll just go back through and see if there are any questions. Are you a chemist? Set answer that. Thanks, James, Brian Lee, Dan, Ahmed, Rob. Afternoon, Rob. Better get a hat on, thank you very much. It's not needed. <laughs> Charlie. Um, oh, the tar, the pure for the, the tar remover. So, I'm just going to adjust the tripod to see if we can get right down. There are a few tar uh, bits and pieces here. Let's get the camera out. Right. be able to catch these on the camera. I don't know if you can see this here. So I'll just use an older pad. The thing that I would probably do with this, and again I wouldn't really be too quick to use this on an area that's been smart repaired because you don't know how good the repair is. Um, the last thing you really want to do with a smart repair is use solvents or really any type of abrasion, abrasive material. Yeah, it takes them off. There you go. That's it. I think that's a chip, unfortunately. That's the joy of it, isn't it? You start, start with one thing and then it becomes another. Um, let's have a look together. So that's roughly where the tar deposits. I don't know if we can find any more. There's a few more down here. This is going above my skill level, guys, to be able to hold the camera and detail at the same time. This is for the one for the YouTubers, I think. Yeah, so that's the there you can see the the tar and the pad. Probably not the way I would go about it, just simply because I, you don't always know what is in the tar. Um, so there might be abrasive contaminants, that type of thing actually within the tar. So you might have tiny wee particles of dust, because the tar is soft when it hits the, the car and then hardens up. Um, so that's the, the main reason that you would use a glue and tar remover, just simply because it will break down the tar and it's one white. It kind of goes back to the issue that we were talking about with the hand, appli hand application of wax. Just using your bare hands, as you want to touch the paint the least amount of times possible to get it clean. That's what it's all about. And that does bring in the tricky area of high alkaline products. Um, but that's more of a personal choice. If you're okay with reapplying your products, more. There isn't really a scientific, I wish there was, that I could say, you know, if you use an alkaline snow foam, you need to apply your wax twice as much as someone that doesn't. It doesn't really work like that because all of the alkaline products are at different pH levels. So, um, again, it's, it's just finding something that works for you. But, as you can see, that was a very, very fast way um, of getting your car to look best. This is another one that we've been working on as well. I'll just show you this. So this is a slightly different one here. Um, and this has also got wearing a uh, Titan as well. So you can see really nice gloss from that. Obviously the reds and the blacks always look great with that, that type of product. Um, that's why when I'm going for a new car and people ask, oh, what colour are you going for? It's got to be black. <laughs> Most difficult car to keep clean, but obviously it looks really nice. And it shows the products as well. So things like, it's, it would be difficult to show you um, the effects of over -appli application or over applying products with lighter coloured cars because it's more difficult to see the, the wax there. Martin, how are you doing? Andy, Charlie, 